well. Okay. Welcome. My name is Daniela. Thank you for joining me. I'm with a very good friend of mine, new friend to me, but I absolutely love and adore her. And as you get to know Catherine, because I'm going to invite her more and more on because she fascinates me and it amuses me. Okay. So yes, her name is Catherine Barajas Bjork and her nickname is the crazy red hair lady. Is that it? Yes, that's right. Yes. The crazy red haired lady. I mean, I have giant hair, so there's I love her hair. So <laughs> truly is quite beautiful. So I invited Catherine on because we were on a cruise together in September and lucky for me, I was able to have the opportunity to get a reading by Catherine and till this day, I don't think she'll ever really know how significant it was because I have a rescue dog that I adopted April 14th, a beagle rescue, about eight years old. And up until the cruise, even like, he still gets funky. If I go to pet him, <laughs> you're gonna hurt me. It's difficulty walking out the back of the slider door. I just had a terrible feeling, like I kept seeing visions of somebody kicking him on the way out, not being kind to him, male. But, um, and he did, I do always see male energy with this, but he does have a preference for females. And it was amazing, the information that Catherine gave me and validated a lot of things. But one of the things that she said was that he missed seeing my face and he was ready for me to come back home. And I have to tell you, Catherine, we did the cruise in September. Till this day, and you're right, when I walked in that dog, the door, the dog smiled at me. And he now went in the house, because he used to only wear the tail on the outside. In the house now, when he sees me in the morning and stuff like that, or I come home from work, he's smiling like, yay, wagging his tail. And it really, like, would have rescued baby steps. But, oh, my God, you've helped me and a mutual friend, Jeremy McDonald, like, raves about his dog passed over and Catherine helped him as well. And as readers, most of us don't hold on to the information because it's not meant for us. So she may not remember, but because of her amazing gifts, I mean, I can send to animals that connect with them, but I feel like this is a big portion of what you do. Is that true? Yes, actually. Um, I, you're right. I don't really hold on to some of the information. It's more of a feeling, I guess. And so I can remember the connection I had with you and your dog and the connection I had with Jeremy and his dog. Um, and so it's, it's, it's just this overwhelming joy for me to be able to bring peace and comfort to both human and animal and to that bond that they share. So, Well, it definitely brought peace, but interest, I don't know how you do it, and maybe you don't either, but you impacted Barney's psyche. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think he really- His head. Well, he needed that confirmation in some ways. I feel like he needed to convey to you that you are his person. And I felt like you needed to know that from, but like on a heart sense, like on a deep yes. sense that he, that I guess that you are the beam of light in his life. And, um, <laughs> and that that's what keeps him going. And that's why he tries. And that's why he tries to get out of being nervous and being scared. He wants to try because you're his human. You're what makes him want to open his eyes in the morning and keep going. So, yeah. I have to admit, um, I'm feeling very choked up right now. <laughs> um, your reading was amazing, but that really does, like, it just amazed me. Like, I've told so many people when I came back about you. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm reading yeah. Morning, and I, I kept the notes. I took notes while you. Oh, um, did you good? That's absolutely. good. Absolutely, and they're visual. Like I don't know why it's important to me. A lot of times, I'll take my notes and put them in a file and things like that. Not yours. The, the you know, they're folded, but I have them yeah. where I see them every single day. I don't know why, but that's very important to me to keep that relationship going with Barney. Well, I think it's he's a he's special i mean every every animal is special and every bond is special but there are extra special ones and he and you have that extra special bond because he comes from like you say a place that was very dark 
And it's just like, you know, you're like that, like, I mean, like almost like a beacon of light. Like when you think of a, um, what are those things called on the ship? And they go round and round a lighthouse. That's it. Sorry. Sometimes my words get away from me. Um, and you're his lighthouse. And so, and I think from his perspective, he didn't think that he was going to get that in his life. He had given up, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. And, and from the energies that I pick up on him now is that he's better. He feels, oh, better, yeah. you know, and, um, yeah, I still see him uh, kind of liking to be under the bed still, but that's yeah, right, now. <laughs> right now. Well, you, you said something about how you had crystals under there and that really, he loves that. And so he likes to like their energy makes him feel good. And it's kind of how he recharges. And so, yeah, but he feels better. His energy feels lighter and less dense than when I first felt, felt him. I, a thousand percent. I'm, I'm just, it's funny because you do readings, right? Like on pets that have passed, pets that are still here. But it's funny, I never heard you say that you could help them like a therapist, which you have. Like, have you realized that? Well, only recently, I guess. I, I started to add in like animal advocate, like on my business cards because i speak for the animals right. and, um and kind of what they need uh i probably you know legally wouldn't be able to say that i'm an animal therapist because i don't have that your typical like phd or i haven't done any of those animal behavior classes like from a scientific standpoint mm -hmm. um so i don't add it in but i would say one of my specialties is like being a therapist for the dog and the human to help human and dog understand each other better. Yeah, I mean, it sounds crazy, but kind of like a marriage counselor. <laughs> well, kind of, yes. yes because it very much is that way. It is that, that way. Yeah. yeah. You're kind of the bridge. Yes, right. I said, and I have talked before about being, I'm the, yes, the bridge that fills in the gap for people. It's so interesting because you have these gifts, not just that, because you're like, oh, I haven't taken the classes, but I have these abilities. And I get that. Do you know what I mean? Because sometimes yeah. different things, like I'll tell people I am not a medical medium, but there are times in my readings, some issues come up. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'll just suggest maybe it's a good time to go to the doctor, you know, blah, blah, blah. Right. Maybe suggest what kind of doctor. But the other, the reason why I think that's so funny with you, because you have natural alchemist abilities or chemistry, like with the other part of your business. Uh -huh. Like, I'm like, wow, like you, you're just a woman of many surprises. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's kind of, I guess it's kind of taken me a little bit to come into each of them, or at least come into the confidence of them, if that makes sense. I, it does, because I know you. Uh -huh. And I think that's the ingredient you're waiting for. Yeah, and I definitely received that from both you and from Jeremy. And just that extra little push, I feel like, to kind of be like, no, now is the time to oh, yeah. step I, out. And this is, this is a safe space. So I agree. And it's funny because he is such a nurturing soul. And I, I really value his friendship. But to me, when... Um, when he started helping me in 2016, like he's such a gracious mentor, you know what I mean? And so I do think it's good that we kind of found you, you know, bumped into you because in this realm. <laughs> yes, exactly, this very dense realm, yes. Some people are more nurturing than others. Yeah, for sure. And, I know that when I, oh, I'm getting chills what I'm going to say to you. When I meet people like you, because there's so many amazing people out there, we're supposed to be shedding on a light. So you, there's still more that you're going to do. Yeah. You know, I know that you have your chemistry set, right? Don't you make teas and soaps and all manner of things, right? Well, I don't make soap, but I make tea and I make baths. And I make spritzers 
and um, I haven't tried soap yet. I have really sensitive skin, so I would it would take some some extra chemistry. I don't feel pushed in that direction yet, but I do. Um, <laughs> work with, right? Yes, um, I am working on massage oils though, so for the skin and. Um, which I mean, you have lovely skin. Like you, it just looks so nice right now. I'm like, oh, okay. thank you. <laughs> yes, I had a shower. That's why. <laughs> now, I find it really interesting because this seems to be a very natural gift of your animal communicator. Can we say that? Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely an animal communicator. I believe you know that I'm that. Definitely. When's the first time that you noticed something like that? Well, I. I guess I kind of felt it first, the, well, it was two things actually, I guess, if I think about it. Uh, once I was at the zoo with my, um, with my daughter for a field trip, wow. and there was a, um, I guess there was a mountain lion, like a, or a lioness, I guess, on the, uh, on a rock sunning herself. And she just looked amazing and beautiful. And I looked at her and I said, you are so beautiful. And she looked back at me and crossed her paws and said, of course I am. <laughs> and I just started laughing because I was like, yeah, that's, you know, that sounds right for a lioness. And, um, but that was that, you know, and I just kind of let it in and out. And then, um, kind of after that, um, I'm trying to think, I guess, I, I can't say exactly how many years ago it was, but uh, the kids, my kids were younger and I was driving through my neighborhood. There was a guy who was walking his golden retriever and he had like a big smile on his face or whatever. And they were just walking down the sidewalk and I was driving past and I heard, I'm so happy. And I was like, I literally stopped in the middle of the, the road because I was like, what was that? What was that? And I looked and I turned around and this dog is looking at me and said, it was me. But And I was just like, oh my gosh, I heard you. And he said, yeah. And it was just the most amazing thing. And I was had to go and research because I like to research and find answers and that kind of thing. I, when I was younger, I had sin, you know what I mean? That's right. Uh, when I was younger, I had two cats, and I had a friend who was an animal communicator who used to communicate for, with my cats. And she said, the gift is in you. You just have to unlock it. And I thought she was, you know, whatever. And 10, ten years later, that dog, that golden retriever with his happy wagging tail basically unlocked it. That is really cool. I love that story. Did you have any pets as a child? Yes, I have. Um, I, I grew up on a farm, a small farm, and I rode horses and showed in the 4-H, and we had lots of barn cats and dogs, and I always loved them. I always loved them, and I always wanted... Um, I, think I, I think I always could talk to them, but I didn't know. I always felt for them, you know, and I would, um, I, I think I always, like being an empath and understanding what that means now, I was always an empath for them. Mm -hmm. So. I'm wondering if you were receiving communication back then and you just maybe thought it was your imagination or you, you know what I mean, your own thoughts. Right. I don't think I, I knew. I knew that I had been told a lot that I was way too sensitive and that used to really annoy me because I didn't know how to be any other way. And about as a child? Yeah, even as a child. Yeah. Um, and I had been, because I had horrible panic attacks, awful, awful panic attacks. And um, that's the sign of an empath. Uh, yeah, and I was six when I had my first panic attack. And uh, but I always felt like the animals understood me. And when I would be in therapy, my therapist would say to my mom, "She spends too much time in her imagination." And then, yeah, so it would be kind of difficult because, and I felt like the animals understood me better than humans did. I 
grew up with a dad that he and they're in my family people that are so connected to animals like i love animals but i love people as well but i noticed that there are people that feel safer with animals and my dad was one of them and he like he just felt like and i believe this to be true like animals are pure for the most part and don't get me wrong i believe they have personalities and they're not all like hi how you doing you know what I mean? <laughs> they have personalities <laughs> and um but there are a lot of humans out there that feel very safe with that animal i've even um known that that special animal that special dog will cross over somebody that believed in dogs more than humans mm -hmm. so i can see why you felt safe with the animals because i'm sure they were very loving towards you yes and and i had so much anxiety and worry um and it felt like that was the only time i loved holding them close to me and like close to my heart and the 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 way that a cat would purr was very soothing for me and their fur and everything like that um so now i understand more of what my job was and what their job is and and how me being extra sensitive, even like, I mean, everything, like the, my sense of smell, my touch, everything, I understand because it's very much like an animal <laughs> in some ways. So, yeah. So heightened, I think what you're really saying is heightened senses. Yes, very much so. And I think that the animals, I identified that in me even when I was younger, even when I was a kid. Okay, and as far back as you can remember, that was just a situation for you, like that. Yeah, okay. I mean, I I rode horses when I was younger, but I remember being really, really scared of them because they were so much bigger than I was, and I was really small and really short, and so, and, but they seemed to know that I was scared of them, and so they kind of stayed out of my way, which is interesting because. Horses are one of the most sensitive animals besides cats, but um, especially if you're riding a horse and if they sense that you're scared, then they will get scared. And so you have to portray confidence when you're riding because otherwise they will just, they're fight or flight animals, they'll just leave, abort mission. And so, and we I've seen that multiple times. We had one horse in particular, I don't know if my sister was having a bad day or something, but she got on our Appaloosa and they were out riding in the field and Sally just sat down on her while while she was riding. She was in the saddle and the horse just got down like, I'm done. <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore. Because I've had a lot of um, very interesting experiences with animals and I know for me, when I was younger, I thought it was my imagination, the communication and stuff like that. And, but I've had a horse like walk across a huge field because I was sitting there quite like in a whisper voice, talking to myself, you know, saying, I, oh my gosh, you're so beautiful. I love you, blah, blah, blah. And the horse walked over and stuck it, it took him a while to get there and then stuck its head inside of my car. And my daughter was, Aww. Goes, what are you, the horse whisperer? And like, I've always had weird interactions, but I never really, you know what I mean? Like, oh, I, I think it's that self doubt that comes in and says, you're not really hearing that, or you're not really seeing that, or you're not really. Coincidence, right? You know? <laughs> yeah, right? Well, especially when you're younger. I mean, especially, you know, teenage years, I had lots of depression and angst, and I felt like my only person was that, I, that was my friend with my horse because he seemed to just know what I needed and I would stand there and brush him and say to him and that was just perfect. Well, so. can you describe to, because I am going to be sharing this, can you describe how you do a reading? Like how do you even start something like that? I think people would be interested in your process. I mean, I know because you did it for me, but mm -hmm. for others, if they were interested in receiving a reading. So I ask someone to send me a picture of their animal and their age, not the not the human's age, but the dog's age, and or a dog or cat or horse, um, the dog, the animal's age, and any specific questions that they have or want to ask the animal, and then 
um, I connect via a photograph. I like to connect via a photograph versus doing it in person because a lot of animals are really sensitive and they would spend more time sniffing me and they would smell my dog Zoe on me and the kids and everything else or they'd be you know like oh look a butterfly I mean they're very squirrel in that way so we get that's partly why we get along so well one squirrel to another but um that um I just find that being able to connect spiritually versus in a physical sense I, I can hold their attention longer and then um once I have my photograph I don't connect with them until like you know a few minutes prior to when I'm going to talk to them um and then sometimes the the animal will want me to connect them to their human so that they feel like like I'm safe to talk to but I usually pray over the whole all of us and ask that um I'm trying to think ask the angels to be there and to soothe anything and then protect both of our spaces and then I connect via a heart link so I connect with my angels first and then I send uh, then the heart link comes from my angels to me and then from me to the animal and then back so it's like a little almost like a little triangle I guess like a one big loop that is so awesome I love that um I want to add to that. Mm -hmm. You don't just give information like words. You give that information. But one of my favorite parts, because I, when I do readings, I can feel like if somebody crossed over, or even if they're living, you know, some, you're asking me about somebody that's not part of this right now, just like you do. Um, I get a sense of them. And it blew me away. Even after the reading was done, you held on to a certain aspect of the dog, I believe, because I met you one evening. You and your husband were walking by. You stopped by a table. I was telling the people at the table about you. And you did something like this. And it was so perfect. Like when Bonnie feels good, he started going like this, like scratching behind the ear. You know, you're a dog. And you're like, oh no, you did it both times. You did it during the reading. What do you want to know? But, but it, but <laughs> when he's having a good moment, you catch it. it. It's so amazing. The essence of his feeling good personality. Oh, I don't know how aware you are that you do that. I didn't. I didn't know that. Um, so that's really funny. Uh, I do set the intention after I speak with the animal that if they have things that they want to say to their human or whatever, that they just send a tug out to me you know and just be like you know send your picture send your face across my across my you know browser or whatever and be like hey i got a question I need to talk to my human so yeah i love it because you even held on to that it must have been something significant because you did it like maybe two nights later and i noticed when i came back home it surprised me at the time because I really didn't get to see that side of his personality. And once I got home, I got to see that. Oh, that's cool. So I didn't know, I didn't know that. You know, it's obviously I learn something every time. I feel like the animals teach me and I teach them. And then my hope is to teach the humans as well with about their pets. So, yeah. Um, I, I thought you should really know that because that was super cool. Um, you mentioned cats. Do you find a difference? Definitely. There's definitely a difference between oh. <laughs> the difference between cats and dogs. You know, there's definitely a difference there. It's, it's a different personality. I think a lot of times cats get a bad rap for being um, cranky, but it's more that because they're so sensitive, I think they just switch gears so quickly. I mean, their immune systems alone are more sensitive than a dog. So, when especially like when you give them medication or if you're going to do the natural route and do essential oils and things like that that's why there's so much out about you know make sure that when you're using the essential oils that you don't overwhelm the cat or gotcha. the, the dog because they're 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 almost like it's almost like their their nervous system is on the outside of them 
so how like one minute they can be playing and the next they bite your head off, you know, kind of like redheads, you know, one minute they're great and the next they're not. So um, <laughs> it's, I think that's why they get the, the, the reason for being cranky. That's excellent. I love that answer. What about, uh, is there a difference for communication? A difference between which two, what I missed the question. Well, like, um, I've had dogs come through on readings, like when I'm connecting with the other side and that it wasn't supposed to be about that, you know what I mean? But if it's somebody that really like, I, and I don't really, when I say somebody, I am talking about the dog. Mm -hmm. If the dog felt such a strong con connection to the human, they'll come in just like yeah. a human will just butt in, even if that's not the one I was trying to talk to. Right. Um, they're verbal. Yes, very much so. Very verbal. And they each have their different personalities and they exactly. even have a different, different inflection in their voice. Some are higher pitched, some are lower, some, uh, but I think it, it took me a long time to understand that. Uh, I could definitely understand the different emotions, like dogs get jealous, they get angry, they get sad, they cry. I mean, they don't cry, but they get very emotional. And cats all have the same thing. That in one way, the cats are a little bit more, I guess, What's her, I guess more outwardly so than uh, than a dog is, but that I think that's just because they are so sensitive. Their intense, their intensity is just more than a dog. And but you find them as verbal. Oh, very much so. Yeah. Nice. That's yeah. interesting. What about horses? Yeah, I they're they're all you know kind of everybody has their own personality. Everybody hooves or paws. It's, everybody's got the sounds of um, things and. It's just different worries. It's kind of like they have different worries than what than what a dog would have. You know, a, a horse doesn't live sit on the couch and inside exactly. while you watch TV, but um, they sit in a barn. It's right. just different type of worry or concern and different social a lot of times. Yeah, yeah. because okay. of the lifestyle. Um, I think like if I I'm just trying to imagine if you somebody not being able to do this, mm -hmm. I would be blown away if I didn't know that you could communicate with an animal. Do you know what I mean? Like to hear this conversation, I'd be like, oh my God, because I was brought up being told, um, like it's weird though, because I look at them as very similar to us, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And to be told as a child that like, they don't have a soul that, you know, once they're dead, they're dead. I don't believe in any of that because from the world, you've seen them. They still exist just like the humans do. Right. Yeah, very much so. They do. A, a dog's going to have a cat's going to have a, they're, they're with you forever. They're just, their spirit. Uh, there are some people that believe that humans, once you're human, you don't go to be an animal and that or that like you start out as an animal and then you go but i i think it just depends on the spirit because there are many situations where they have been a human in the past life and they wanted to come back and be with their human so they took on a dog form or they took on a cat form that is fascinating i love that you brought that up because sometimes when i'm connecting like just as me like say with bonnie mm -hmm. Bonnie feels more human to me. I know he's a dog, but on a heart-to-heart -heart basis, there's something there. And I've I've had that experience my whole life. My first dog that I really was in love with, Daisy, a Dalmatian, I thought she was my sister. You know? <laughs> okay. Well, because they feel they they feel that that void. They feel that understanding, that thing that we needed. I mean, I needed a best friend. I needed someone to to listen to me and be goofy with me. And I felt like I could do that with my horse and that I could sing to them, the little mermaid, and I wouldn't be interrupted because he didn't care. And he understood that I needed that. So um, I definitely have felt them as, as both physical humans and as dogs, cats. That. I just think it brings people hope that because, again, as we started in the beginning, how my father was, the dog came to cross my dad over. Like yeah. my, my dad, we were all, um, 
he was at home, but he was dying. And we were all in the room with him, a lot of us, um, one of seven siblings. And he looked over the hospital bed in his bedroom. And he goes, the dog had died, I don't know if it was a week, week, shortly before my dad died. And I really think it was the clock motor. And he looked over at the starter rail and goes, oh, Max, mama let you in. And he started talking to the dog that we couldn't see. And it just really like, we all thought the same thing. Max, step, you know, just started to cross to help my dad cross over because my dad trusted dogs more than humans. So it just was a very, very interesting thing. And that just proves again that they still exist. So oh, very much so, yeah. I mean, people here when they lose their pets, don't you think it gives them a tremendous amount of, when their pet is their baby, yeah. like, right? That to be able to connect with somebody like you. Well, and I, I tried to ask the pet that has already crossed if there was something that they did normally that maybe they could let their human know that they're around. I, I, I went to talk with a cat that on a regular basis, he was 17. And I actually had no idea he was 17. And, and I thought he was like eight or nine, which is why I started asking people that when I talk to their pets, to give me the age, because they don't always feel their age. So when there are things that health concerns that come up, like he was having issues with his hips and that kind of thing, I was surprised because he didn't give the persona that he was 17. And so it wasn't until I started asking, well, how old is he? You know, that I was like, oh, that's why you're having these concerns. But one of his things that he really loved was rainbows. And, um, and so and his favorite color was green. And I told her when he was alive that he needed, he really wanted sun catchers, anything to put rainbows around on the floor because he really thought that was super fun. So she went and she found a bunch and she put them around and she put them in her meditation room and then her other cats would come in there and they'd sit and, and enjoy the rainbows. So when he crossed, I said, why don't you send rainbows? So she actually has taken video and sent it to me of rainbows that appear on the window and on the carpet and when there's not a breeze around at all but they're dancing all over the place really and it, yeah and i think it, it's him pushing the window uh the window catchers the sun catchers around on the window with his ethereal self and creating the dancing to let her know that he's nearby oh that's so awesome um have you ever had one of your pets come through that passed uh, no, actually, I haven't. I, I had, um, I had. Well, my horse, my one horse that I had, King, and um, I had. Um, he's he's no longer living, but. Um, no, but you had an experience with him. No, I mean, I was trying to think of when I had wanted to connect with him, and um, and and I had ended up having another friend tell me, oh, he's, he's nearby, um, um, look for this. Of course, I can't remember what it is at the moment. Uh, I did get concerned about one of my kitties because I had two cats and they, they took matters basically into their own hands and I understand it now and I used to feel really guilty about it. But um, after my late husband passed, they, there was so much grief and there was so much, there were so many people coming and going, it became too much for them. And mm -hmm. now that I understand that it, what I understand now about cats and their and their sensitivity, I totally get it. But um, the door was left open, and my one cat, Violet, she got out. And there was actually a cat that used to roam around our cul-de-sac that was all black. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize that that was her, and it was another cat. And so she was a mainly indoor cat, but I think that she... She came outside, and she kind of wandered around the driveway a little bit, but I didn't... I wasn't in a space to really see that it was really her because I wasn't in my right mind. Right. And, um, and so she left. And I used to feel really bad because I felt like I forced her out. And, but I, it wasn't. It was just that she couldn't take it in anymore. And Which makes sense. Yeah. And I was able to connect with her later after I learned more about connecting with animals and such. And it doesn't stop me, though, from looking when I see a, a uh, stray 
to see, is it violet? Is it violet? It's not. Violet's on the other side. I know that. But um, I, I feel like she taught me that sometimes it's okay that humans make mistakes, but that they can, they can fix it later in life. Exactly. I, I, I know that. It, have you come across the experience where when they, it's like they know they're going to pass and they also want to run away. They don't want to pass in front of you. Yes. I've had that with other animals, not my own, but um, I've had that with other animals, other people that, you know, their dogs get lost or they'll, you know, they'll be like, but I don't understand. She was just right here. Well, how old was she? You know, or can you tell me things leading up to it, this or that? And there are many occasions where the dog, the cat, the, you know, whatever will take matters into their own hands. They don't want to suffer. They don't right. want their human to suffer. And so they will, um, they'll go, they'll get out. So. I, you're just amazing. You fascinate me. Thank you so much for joining me today. Now, if someone wants to get a reading by you, how can they like find you? Like you want to share your Facebook page, your business oh. page, what do you, well, how would you like them to find you? They can they can find me um, on Facebook, the Crazy Red Haired Lady, and um, also through my website, the Crazy Red Haired Lady dot com. It's all one word together. Um, and then I was trying to think. Um, Catherine Barajas Bjork is kind of a large name, so the Crazy Red Haired Lady. You can just Google that, and you will find me. I have a my I live in Indiana. I've got three three one seven area code, so um, I think that. And then through my website, you can also read about uh, the other products that I offer, and other um, both human and uh, animal treatments that I do as well. Because that's a whole other side of you. All the products that you do, um, Catherine puts love into everything that she does. If you get the pleasure ever to meet her in person, um, she just has this great energy. She's very authentic. Like what, from what I've known of you, what you see is what you get, and I greatly value that. She's got a huge heart, very compassionate, and I think one day we're going to see Catherine speaking more and more and more because she has quite the story to share with us. This was just a tidbit of <laughs> her abilities, her life story. So this is just a little tidbit. That's why I want to have Catherine come back and talk to us more, because I'd like to talk to her the next time the other side of you, the chemist. <laughs> okay, well, that would be great. Well, I'm so grateful that you asked me to come on, and I'm so grateful for our connection and that we happen to be on the boat at the same time. It and really the, the way oh, that you have blessed me in my life as well. So I can't wait to, to talk about more about how we can help the animals together. And I can't wait until I get to see you in person, God willing, in April. Oh, I can't wait that either. That's too fun. <laughs> I know when you said we wanted to talk today, I was like, I can't wait. I can't wait. So. Oh. And that's the thing I was thinking these lives will give us a chance to like see each other. Maybe next time we'll both have a cup of coffee while we do it. There we go, right? So then we will be really catching up and have with our cup of coffee. Exactly. I love you so much. Thank oh, you. I love you too. Thank you. Thank everyone for joining us. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Okay.